Ooh-wee. Today's episode is a great one, you guys. On today's episode, I welcome the fantastically funny Emily Hagen. Emily is an actor, a comedian, and the host of the truly hilarious podcast, Emily Knows Everything, on which she's spoken with industry giants, comedians, spiritualists, influencers, weed experts, ghost hunters, and, well, just an insane array of engaging personalities that you should definitely check out. If you are seeking some other great binge-worthy entertainment that's also sexucational, I appear on an episode of Sexology with Shan Boudrin on Quibi. Shan is a sexual educator who goes deep in openly and honestly discussing sex, relationships, and how to keep it spicy and harmonious in the bedroom. Sign up for Quibi today to get 90 days free, and check me out in the May 6th episode titled Bedroom Voice. As you will also hear me discussing with Emily later in the episode, I have officially launched an OnlyFans account. For those who are not familiar, OnlyFans is a site that allows users to post content of an adult nature for a monthly fee. It is sort of like a Patreon for mature material. Please be advised, the content on my page is not for all viewers, but if you would like to see my work, the link is on my new Linktree address at linktr.ee forward slash Devlin Wilder, D-E-V-L-I-N-W-I-L-D-E-R. And without any further ado, on to the show with my excellent guest, Emily Hagen. It's already recording. Everything's recording. Oh, you're already recording. I already pressed all of the buttons. Don't worry. No, I was going to call and be like, I, I can't do it. I think I have COVID. Like, and then I realized it's just that I, I've developed this dust allergy because I just moved out of my apartment. Oh. So many boxes. Like, my oh, yeah. And every time I go in the living room, I sneeze. And it's because I need to get rid of all this old stuff. So, and then I like... I did like a workout and then I was like, I'm short of breath, but it's because I was working out. So I, people are really thinking <laughs> they have something that they, and they don't. Quit taking care of yourself, like, Emily. I, You're going to make yourself said, sick if you quit, if yeah, you don't yeah, stop. I did a nap in the middle of the day and I was like, I'm really tired. And then my boyfriend's like, you took a bath, man. I was like, oh yeah. Because I had so much to do today. I needed to take it. I thought I needed to take like an anti-anxiety, but... That, I haven't taken one in a while, and that's probably why I got really tired. But now I'm feeling great, so I'm ready. I'm ready to do this pod. All right. Excellent. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I I have ridiculous allergies myself, and I, it, it's just such a <laughs> fucking pain in the ass. It really is, because I never know what the fuck is going on with my body. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because when I get sick, I whenever I have an allergy trigger... It's also an asthma trigger, which... I have asthma as well. Do you? Oh, that's right. Yeah, we've so talked I'm, about this, right? I, I'd be allowed to say. I don't know if we've had an asthma talk. Well, let's get into it. <laughs> have you... As, as, is that something that you found out about late in your life? No, when, I used when did to, you find I, out? I was hospitalized twice as a kid. Like, I had an asthma attack, and it was always caused by, like, a weird allergy. Mm -hmm. I remember I had an asthma, my throat closed up once when I was getting an allergy shot. They like injected the wrong thing into me and then my, I had to go to the Oh God. Um, but like as far as like on the soccer field, like when I was playing sports growing up, I never really had, I just made sure my inhaler was like on the sidelines and I would take some puffs, but I never really had an attack from that. What about you? Um, it, my, my body is all fucked up, honestly. Uh, I went to the cardiologist yesterday. I've been trying to get in to see a cardiologist for months and months and months. I go to a clinic because that's what, that's the only thing that Medi-Cal will pay for, right? But I was going to say, like, because I'm also on Medi-Cal and I didn't know they covered cardiology. They have to, though, right? They have to cover everything. Well, they don't. <laughs> they definitely don't. 
thankfully though my my primary worked with me to set up uh getting getting this appointment with a cardiologist who i had to go back and forth with forever i mean they first talked to me about going to see a cardiologist over a year ago and i'm just now being able to actually see them of course and we're dealing you know in the middle of a pandemic so and let me tell you it was the weirdest fucking hot like medical situation Why did you I, a cardiologist you have a heart attack no, it was just because... Do your followers want to hear about this? Or is this gonna be <laughs> I, I don't have any actual listeners. It doesn't matter. I mean, the, the only people that are going to be listening to this are your listeners, maybe. And that's... Uh, you, have, you have followers. I mean, you know, yeah, maybe two. Maybe two or three. All right, so my listeners want to know about our health problems? <laughs> Listen, I don't know. I... But it was so weird, Emily, because, you know, everybody in there, uh, I have a heart condition. It's called a bicuspid aortic valve. It's congenital. I've had it my entire life, but I didn't know about it until about 10 years ago. I was a model, a model, and I say that with air quotes because uh, I was a model for ultrasound machines, which I've done a few times. I did it in St. Louis. I think you an ultrasound machine model. It's the sweetest gig you can ever imagine because you lie there? there. Yeah. You lie there the entire time. You got, uh, you got hot doctors like, you know, up in your crevices looking around. So I had, uh, I was, Oh, so you got, you got hired to be a, the patient. They were right. They were, they it were paying me. Like you were feeling that vibe that you had something wrong. Well, I did. I just didn't know that I did until that moment. Well, look at Kathy. Well, they were doing an echocardiogram, right? So they were all up in my in my sternum, like up under here, looking around, and they're like, "Oh, this is very interesting." And I'm like, "What? What is interesting?" And they said, "Well, you have a bicuspid aortic valve." And I'm like, "I don't know any of those words. What are you talking about?" So essentially, most humans have three valves to their aorta, have two, which makes things really fun with my asthma, which is already very severe and has been since I was very little, in that it decreases the capacity of my bronchial tubes um, to not so much taking in air, but exhaling. Welcome to the medical podcast. I didn't even know we had one valve, let alone three. Surprise. Wow, if you never did that modeling shoot, you wouldn't have known, which makes me believe that it wasn't affecting you that well, much then, if oh, you didn't know about it. it was. I just never knew that it was, because oh, doing an awesome. echocardiogram is something very specific that you have to you have to ask about, you have to know about, and I never did, so. Yeah, but did your heart, like, skip a beat? Did, it, did you have palpitations? Like, how did you, how come you never thought about it? because my asthma has always been so severe that it was never, I always just thought it was attributed to my asthma. Yes, I've had, I've, I've had heart palpitations, murmurs, all sorts of things all my life. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that one modeling job uh, <laughs> discovered what, what was going on. And I got How paid got like $600 for the weekend to, uh, you got paid I did to lay yeah. there and find out, yeah, normally you have to pay for the audiograms echocardiogram mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah well um, that's good that you're um, staying safe then during quarantine because you've got two triggers that wouldn't be good if you caught covid not at all no definitely high risk so what is this podcast about <laughs> I, know a lot of, I know you interviewed my friend april and i did you have a lot of eclectic weird people on like mine yes I that is the best way possible that's going to be my soundbite from now from now on. Weird eclectic people. Yes, that's pretty much the flow of the whole show, Emily. This is, I don't know what the show is about. Listen, I had um, <laughs> I had Christina Hutchinson and Corinne Fisher on, which they do you know who they are? Yeah, the guys who fuck podcasts. That's right. <laughs> How did you get that? It's I've asked myself that so many times. It was their publicist. They were getting ready to. Did you get in touch with their publicist? Give me some pointers. I didn't. She contacted me. Can you believe that shit? So here's how I, I never actually found out how that happened. I still don't know. My theory is 
I used to co-host this other show called Friend or Foe, spelled, you know, the normal way. And we were on UBN, which was done out of Sunset Gower Studios. We had a decent amount of listeners. When I split off, I started this show. I kept the email. So I think a lot of the publicists that had already interacted with us thought it was the same show. So they were still sending me guests that they thought were for the other show. Oh. Their mistake, my game. Wow. So you really, did they get mad after they found out it wasn't the right show? Nobody said anything to me. How was your relationship with the girls? (laughs) Weird. It was, no. It was weird. I wish it would have been more sexual. I wanted to get into, like, the, you know, because that's, that's what they talk about, right? They're the no, uh, the, the, uh, um, the experts. Yeah, they're the sex experts, right. And we started getting into it, but I think they were mostly kind of confused as to <laughs> why they had been sent on my show. And, um, right out of a job where they were like I didn't do a bad job I think they were just uh it was it was a little strange also we were I'm gonna post this and be like this is this guy gets people on his show in weird ways listen up I have to be shameless Emily because I'm just a guy I need to adopt some of your delusional (laughs) I don't reach out to people enough you have to be shameless there's How nothing wrong with attitude? that. your attitude? I wish you had it on video. Can I listen to the episode? Sure. Of course you can. How do you know they didn't like you? Well, they didn't promote it. So they didn't promote the episode. That's a sure sign that someone doesn't like the show. I had a girl on my podcast. She didn't promote the episode. And, you know, the narcissist in me thought it wasn't because she didn't like me. It's because the other model I had on my show looked hotter than her. And she didn't want to be. Well, that could have been it, too. Exposed for how she actually looks on video because it's a lot different than how she looks on a filtered photo on Instagram. So I will not, I'm going to just say she didn't promote it because, you know, she didn't like how she looked. I'm not, I'm not going to take any accountability for it at all. And it's your show, so you don't have to. We had two hot models on at the same time. The one posted, promoted it six times and the other promoted it zero times. Yeah, right. I have some hot models on my show. It's the, he's a You've had a lot player. of hot models. This is not one of them. I do. I have an OnlyFans account. The dog? Do you actually? Yeah, I just posted He has an OnlyFans account where he posts memes. I'm getting ready to start one. I just got approved. I'm getting wet. By the way. <laughs> I got, this whole thing is strange. Oh, really? Copy the link. Apparently, you can no, send beta for you. This is advice for you. Uh, faceless nudes to. Is that the guys. key? Faceless nudes. So if the unemployment checks aren't kicking in. <laughs> they do. I'm not kidding, Emily. Yeah. That's my goal. Faceless, faceless Yo, nudes. Sex work on this podcast. I don't know what this is guys about. All right, let's carry on with the show. <laughs> Listen, it's totally fine. I was just verified for my OnlyFans account earlier this morning, and it's going to be going serious? live. Yep, absolutely. It's going to be what going live in the next 48 hours or so. You're not, what are you going to do? Naked stuff? Like, naked stuff? Listen, I have no shame in my body. I would be, uh, this is our first time having this conversation. Otherwise, I'd probably be shirtless, much like Burt Kreischer. I have no, like... This guy, I, said, you already got your first follower. <laughs> he wants to subscribe. <laughs> Well, I'm still figuring that out. What do you charge? What, what do I charge? What, is it, what does this become? <laughs> I don't know about it. I charge enough. Give him some advice. You're an OnlyFans expert. Well, what would you depends, say? It depends, it depends on how big your dick is, probably, right? Uh, well, no, it just depends on what kind of content. If you just post posting pictures, you cannot make it expensive at all. Okay, so photos only, you can't make it expensive. But video, you can charge a heavy your penny. Well, yeah. Bye, bordering on pan. 
So that means you can have two different types of, mm -hmm. you're going to be, you, you're, you're not limited in your demographic to your own. That's friends. right. That's can, right. Yeah, you could be doing this. Yeah, he can, why is everyone in my life bi? Are they? Should I be? I couldn't swing it, she said. No? Not into the ladies? I didn't, by the way, I didn't know he was going to be here. He just kind of came to my house today because his bags are in my living room and he needs to get them out and he doesn't have a ride. So he has to wait for me to be done for me to give him a ride to his Airbnb because I'm not letting him stay here. My boyfriend said, I don't want speed. He said, I, I don't need, he said, I don't, oh my God, what did he say? It was so funny. No, he said, I don't want another person, another human in our space. And I said, you want me in the space? And he said, barely. Wow. I don't do, I don't, haven't been doing the dishes. Anyways, let's get back to his OnlyFans. That's what's important. Honestly, I subscribe. He said he would subscribe. You will? Why? You, you owe me That's $40. one. You need, you need to send me the $40 before you're giving this guy money. I know it doesn't matter. I gave you a roof over your head, and you're sitting on my. You still owe forty dollars. You paid me shorter rent, forty dollars. So I need the forty, and then, then you can subscribe, because I need to pay my and the utilities you still pay. All right. So you you, you gained a subscriber. You gained a subscriber just as fast as you lost a subscriber. Great. That's usually how it happens. Can we just talk about how cute Melly looks underneath Speak Live? Yeah, yeah. So really cute. Photo of her? I, I, I photo Sorry, this is becoming chaos. <laughs> That's all Why my show has guy ever in my been. Life have an only fan oh, account? Okay, sure. This is interesting. So today we went to the post office to do, to do my packages. I'm hoping Stencil will go to UPS to drop this one off, or I can. <laughs> We can, when I drive him, I can drop it off. Yeah. Okay, so basically, he was at the post office today doing my errands for me because he's my errand boy. And as he was at the post office, he saw a black guy that's trans that was in white face. Gotta love LA. Wait, are you sure it wasn't just sunscreen? Oh, wow. It's like when I did um, the white and blue face. Remember, I did white and blue face. It's yeah. like Braveheart. I did a video where I was blue and white face. Oh, yeah. Interesting. It's like he just did the white. Yeah. Anyways, how does this apply to the conversation? Do you want him to be doing that white face on his OnlyFans? He's already white. Well, I'm just subscribing and paying $30 for That's your fetish? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. wait a minute. What? what? Like, I want to know. I'm, I'm just curious. What kind of I mean, I guess that depends on what people want to see. I've got several folders. With white paint on your face. I won't be doing that. No, my my face. I'm already the level. I'm already Conan level white, so I reflect the light. My level of whiteness, so nobody wants to see that. Whiter. Not a chance. <laughs> White and nerdy is my, you know, forever theme song. So that's not, that's, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. But I mean, I've got, I've got several folders of, you know, various nudes and artistic nudes, and oh, um, wow. so that's what it's gonna be to start out with. I didn't know it was gonna be. Is there, is there... I didn't know it was an only fans commercial. It's not. No, it's the funniest content probably. No, no, no. There will what there will that? be no uh, there will be no vegetable raping in my in my videos. Wait, gosh, no, no gosh, cake gosh, sitting. Gosh. No balloon popping. Wait, what you kidding? People actually put an eggplant up their butt. Sure. You, you <laughs> sure they do. You put an eggplant up your butt. Okay, he's lying because he, <laughs> his eyes kind of shifted. What? Were you cleaning it? Yeah, I decided to put it further. <laughs> Why not? Did you hear that? Unfortunately, I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you done that? 
No, I don't. Uh, I don't do anything with vegetables. No cake sitting. No balloon popping. No. It, it's not that I won't do fetishes. I just like I don't have the financial access to have like whips and chains and shit in here. If I did, well, I probably would. Right. But no, 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 thanks. Mm -mm. If I did, I are really big. I'm bigger than like the biggest. No, I'd give it a big one. Anyways. <laughs> he said he put soap he used soap soap oh to wash it off soap. before stick it well you'd want to wash it off first that makes sense but no i don't i won't be sticking things up other things it'll just be how would this become a chat about <laughs> like an auctioneer of what you want on his only fan like i knew you were kind of gay but i didn't know you were this gay uh... Okay, he said just support an artist's OnlyFans. Yeah. Well, pay your forty dollars that you owe me for. You know it's weird though, like it's weird because he actually is anti thirst traps for females, but yet is supporting this. Ah. Like my friend posted a photo the other day, and she, and he commented on it. She her caption was, "What's more fake, the moon landing or my tits?" No, the moon or something. <laughs> Whatever. He wrote your tits or something. And they got into a whole conversation, and then he was trolling her, but he blocked her. And then he told me, I don't really like when women post thirst traps. Basically, he said because you're actually doing it as a profession, that he appreciates your hustle. Or he has another job like that. But yeah. he doesn't like that she's just posting thirst traps for validation. I don't think you should care about the intent of the thirst trap. You're being very judgmental. My mom won't even let me post, like, side boobs. I've got a lot of Catholic guilt from being raised in a Catholic household, so. What? What does that mean? You're saying it'd be better? Oh my god, he's saying if I posted my body, I'd have less followers. <laughs> that would be I did once. I wore out, like, one guy messaged me, be proud of yourself, you have 50,000 followers, and not a single photo of your ass, and I was like, yeah, if I posted my ass, I'd probably have 38 followers. <laughs> and that's pretty much what you're saying. Not what I'm saying. Like, when I'm assuming people like you, it's because you don't post thirst traps, and then another person that posted shit, you can post What if I mixed in thirst traps with personality? What do you mean by that? Because you're actually casting a lot of down you want to say. Well, that's, that's another joke in my set that you're stealing. You know, let's just get back to our conversation. <laughs> let's forget about this guy. <laughs> I don't, I don't know which conversation we vaulted off uh, from, but we got to talk about your podcast, right? You have a very popular podcast called Emily Knows Everything, which are you- I haven't posted any episodes. It's been like, in, I only post like once a month because I have a lot of other passions, aka distractions. So I've been going live endeavors, on Instagram Emily, a lot. Endeavors, Emily. Artistic endeavors. A lot during the quarantine. Um, I have two episodes that are coming out soon, and judging by this conversation, both of you seem very interested. One is with a trans porn couple, and the other is with two dominatrix. They teach me how to become a dom. So really? These are episodes that I think your listeners and Speed's listeners. Listen, I'll be, be I'll be for. all up on both of those episodes. Absolutely. So you, this is this is the great thing about you and your show, right? You. You're not afraid to to get down to business, to talk very openly and honestly about um, things of sexual nature, things in people's relationships. I am a little afraid. You know, I think that's actually why I haven't Are posted you? this trans episode yet because it gets so graphic and I'm still holding on to the dreams that, that maybe one day I could be a mom on Nickelodeon. Is that your goal? So I, I, it was always the goal. I love Nickelodeon. And Me too. Channel stuff. But the thing is, is like, if I post an episode talking about how this couple has sex, it's very graphic. That could, that could possibly take me out of the PG-13 category and into this R-rated category. Does that generally wig you? That's is that, thing. were you, so you grew up Catholic. Did that keep you from, you know, finding out about sexual things? Were you a late bloomer in that sense? Um, and I lost my virginity when I was 14. Okay. My sex is not regress. Really? The older I've gotten, the less I value it. I don't care about it anymore. I feel like it's the easiest thing you can possibly do. It requires, it's very prime. So I like to expend my energy on 
I remember back where I came from, the guys were having sex with the seventh graders. I remember I was in seventh grade and found out this other girl in my grade had sex with the senior. That's very weird. That's great. Yikes. Eight yeah, year that's old uh... having sex with a you're what? You're twelve to thirteen year old. That's gross. I ended up being roommates with this girl years later and she ended up taking me out of the apartment for playing music late at night. I'm thinking maybe it's the trauma from that first sexual experience that led her to hate me. I will not take accountability for that either. Just like I will not take accountability for that model. What did you talk to April about? So we have this girl that we know, a mutual friend, April. Yeah. She How did you guys meet? Did family. you meet through me or did you meet before me? Did you meet? Through the, this guy named Future. Future? The rapper? Yeah. He, he, no, I wish. Oh, God, I wish. Um, he's hot, but no. Sorry, Stencil. I like Future the rapper. You saw him at our Senio Hall show, you know. No, my, I didn't meet him through the rapper, I met him through my follower. And he um, runs this thing called FPS Comedy. And it's a Seattle network of comics and Phoenix comics, so he connects people. And he met me somehow, and he connected me with April. So what did you and April talk about? Nothing. I mean, we talked a lot about comedy. She's doing a lot of, um, of you know, online comedy performances right now, a lot of, a lot of Zoom performances. And uh, yeah. and she's really getting she a kick out of it. Yeah, and there there are a lot of opportunities for that right now. So she's really taking advantage, which is a really good thing. She's such a great comic. She is, you know, uh, very much self-deprecating, and she's so fucking talented, and she has no idea like how talented she is. She's one of those people that it's like hard to see herself from the outside, as I suppose many of us are. It's hard to look at ourselves from the outside in, but uh, you know, she is she is amazing. She's, I think she knows she's talented. Hmm. I think she's starting to know it. I Good. did her astrology chart, and ever since, it's like she's a whole new person. That's right. You did a reading for her. I watched. And the reading was about how she um, has a lot of this, yeah, hidden energy where she's holding herself back. And isn't uh, embracing her power as much. Good. But she uh she just she just won a rose petal the other night where she posted I will win this I will be the victor and she wrote that affirmation on a poster in her room and she won. And she manifested she her own that. victory. Yeah. Well done. She also wrote about 150 jokes for Zoom rooms. So give it up to April for all that hard work. That's incredible. Bravo, April. It's when, anyways. Have you been doing a lot of readings lately? When did you start doing that? I've done more reading astrology readings than I've done more than I've done Zoom comedy shows. That's for sure. I've probably done like seven Zoom shows so far. I'm doing another one. I'm doing two this weekend. It'll, they're always fun. I'm actually really enjoying the online comedy world. I notice that's where I really shine. I usually take control of every show I'm on. It's like I've been doing this internet thing for so long, and everyone was making fun of me, like. Emily's all about her social media and her stream. And it's like, well, bitches, it finally paid off because look who has to do it now, you. And you don't have any ability to run a room on a virtual platform. I also have less anxiety when I'm on my, my couch doing comedy. Me too. I, I don't love have this. to actually be surrounded by asshole comics. I can just be, if I don't like them, I can just like mute. I don't have to look at their video. Right. That's what I've been doing a lot because on Zoom you have the, on my if I'm using my phone you only can see four at a time. So if there's like negative Nancy's comics, I can just I, I don't want to perform to them. I just go to the people that give me the best vibes and I leave my screen on them while I'm doing my set. So whoever's like smiling or laughing the most, I'll just leave it on that screen. Yeah, that's the great power of of Zoom. I'm enjoying that is it. The Zoom. Trick I'm getting a comics. Yeah, I'm really getting a kick out of it. No one ever knows if I'm wearing pants or not. So it's it's a great secret that I get to... It's like that newspaper. Right. He wasn't wearing pants. Did he get fired for that? A guy went on the news the other day and he was broadcasting from home. And I he saw had that. a suit on and then no pants. I saw that. Because he, did, he, he, framed, he didn't realize the framing, so he got fired, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Let me did. see. Let me look. Let me fact check it. No, I think you're right. And listen, shit happens, man. I I was doing. News reporter, no pants. 
reporter car with no pants live on air. The reporter went on air wearing a suit coat and no pants. It doesn't say if he got fired or not. It was like Good Morning America. Oops. Holy shit, that's funny. <laughs> he looks young. I would fire him. He looks young. He, he shouldn't be, um, he should be slapped on the wrist. That's true. We do need some laughter. But do you know how many people need a job like me? I could take. I I I put pants on if I worked at Good Morning America. Bullshit. Bullshit. This guy. You know what? This guy needs to be fired. We have people that need jobs right now, and there are people that will go the extra mile to put pants on. Okay. That's right. So if you're listening, Good Morning America, then you should fire this guy. He should go work for Barstool Sports somewhere That's right. where wearing no pants and being a bro is rewarded. But I think someone like me, who's developing into my inner Karen, should come and make my appearance as a new round table host at Good Morning America. So that is my uh, um, virtual cover letter to Good Morning America. Hoda, if you're listening, Kathy Lee, if you're there, uh, please hire me. I get Botox. We have a lot in common. I might clip that. I like that. That was a cool little. <laughs> that, yeah, that that's great. I will listen. I mean, they listen to the show. They're they're, uh, you know, I got. Gonna, that's like four. Video, so I'll clip that, and I'm gonna tag Good Morning America. <laughs> okay. He'll get unemployment. Yeah, I'll get off of unemployment, go work for Good Morning America. I've been broadcasting from my couch every night of the week, going seven hours. I have the, and I've been running clothes. I've been renting wardrobe just to do my lives. I am ready, and I have the audacity and the courage, the bravery, and the strength. I don't think you, I have a journalism degree. I could totally do his job, and I could do it better because I know how to put pants on, and I know how to frame a fucking selfie. I used to work for a news station. What? On TV Live. Uh, have I? I have never been an anchor. I used to work for newspapers. It is, neither does he. He can't do his job. He got hired probably because he knew someone. And if he's not wearing pants, maybe he's comfortable with his sexuality. Hey, I'm not saying. Hey, listen. I saw I saw the movie. I saw the movie. What was Bombshell? Okay. I know what goes on in these newsrooms. I'm not saying this guy paid sexual favors to get his job, but I, he's saying, of course he did. I am saying that if the guy, if the guy does lose his job, I think he'd be, he, he's pretty good looking. I think he would start an OnlyFans account, and I think he'd be making more money than he's making at Good Morning America. We all know my mom will not let me start an OnlyFans account. Yeah, cause... So let that guy leave Good Morning America, start his OnlyFans account. He'd already have thousands of subscribers, or as Devin says, hundreds of thousands of listeners and subscribers. I don't have the parents that would let me do the OnlyFans, so let me take the real job. Everyone wins, and that's the end of the spiel. My mom knows everything. I literally greet, cough, and she'll call me and be like, and I just heard something. She knows everything, okay? I can't get away with anything. She was 3,000 miles away. So the name of your show is actually to spite your mother to prove that you know everything and she doesn't. She hates my name. It all comes together. We've solved it. Oh, man, back. <laughs> I, uh, we got to get this podcast out soon, this Good Morning America story. <laughs> this is old news. Right now it's this new is, and old. Uh, this is gotta get this gold content. Now. Well, it'll How be... How long does it take you to edit a podcast? If I, if I really put myself to it, about three hours. I mean, I can... I don't think it'll be that If long. I can... Yeah, from... Yeah, three hours sounds about right for an hour-long show. Yeah. If I really go in and edit it to death and pull out all the ums and ahs and weird shit... Don't do all that. Well, you know, I usually don't. I got real lazy, especially with the episodes this oh, year, but... It's like the GMA got now we're not fans. Yeah. You gotta add that our friend's name. I didn't even hear it. Okay, we'll see if you can. But if I if I hear it when I listen back, I'll cut it out. Don't worry, I'll I'll cut out all the bullshit. That's that's how these things come together. The bullshit is good though. 
That's true. Don't cut out the um, OnlyFans segment and the... Um... No, I want everyone to know I'm going to be promoting it to death as soon as it's up and live. Let's, you better believe. Honestly, I still have threaded it. Let's cut out the entire beginning where you talk about your heart monitor and my asthma. No one cares about our, our problems. Just get right to the OnlyFans, huh? Yeah, I think it should be about the OnlyFans and how the Good Morning America guy needs an OnlyFans and Speedy's OnlyFans. And then I think he does. Uh, he could... And then me not, and then me possibly subscribing to both because I'll be on that Good Morning America salary. Uh, it's best for literally all of us if this situation happens. You guys, I will subscribe to both of your OnlyFans and not even, not even. Thanks. I won't even address the content. I will just give you the premium subscription with my Good Morning America income. I love it. I don't want a private video. You don't even have to make extra content. I will just subscribe at the highest tier. Thanks. Just because I have my job at Good Morning America. Thanks, Emily. I appreciate you. So you do no work and get my subscription. I got that Good Morning America guy I didn't subscribe to any only fans. No. Well. Now, why are you fighting for this guy's job speed? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe he's already got it made with the OnlyFans. He can he can have a, a segment on there called. I mean, he can talk. A three way OnlyFans. It's like the hype house for OnlyFans. I'm on, I'm on cam for podcasting. Not for OnlyFans. I don't even know how. I I really don't know how it works. I gotta I gotta go in there and you know, figure out all the, all the nitty gritties of, of, you know, but I follow enough porn stars and they're, you know, I see how they do it. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. Anyways. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> so you grew up Catholic. We're you... not going to start. We're not going to go up. We already went over my virginity. We don't need to start with my birth mom. We started at age 14, and we're going to just stick. Okay. All right. That's. No reason to backtrack now. We need to wrap it up, just like you guys will be on your <laughs> We've been on. But no. Really? Yeah, it's 3.57, and I have to get to the post office before Jeez. Five. All right. Well. Thank you for joining me, Emily. <laughs> Let me give you one more topic. Okay. All right. So, your so choice. This is your faux real podcast, not mine. Although I tend to take over everyone as I go on. That's fine. It's called control issue. I need to be in control of the podcast. All right, Janet Jackson. Um, so. Is that how she acts? Control. She wasn't control. She likes control. Thus the name that of. Was, that was. That was. Janet Jackson's the Super Bowl. Remember? Yeah. Hard Justin to forget. Timberlake. What was it? Je yeah, Janet Jackson, right? Yeah, Janet Jackson how with the nip slip. Mm -hmm. How young are you? <laughs> a few years ago. No, it wasn't a few. It was like. Yes. It's like 12 years ago. Yeah, so she doesn't have much control. I mean, she, she had a nip. She's just. She, Janet Jackson's no different than the Good Morning America guy yet. She got so much backlash because she's a woman. Yeah, everyone's praising the Good Morning yeah, America Yeah, but who guy. fucking cares? Like, right, so... Right, nipple and leg is a lot different. Oh. She got was... a lot of it. People were giving Shakira and J-Lo backlash as well. Oh, you know, I God. also read that if a woman is uh, more overweight, people slut shame them more. Where if a girl is skinnier, like, of I'm course. TikTok right now. They're flagging women in bathing suits if they're fat, but like if you're skinny, they let your they. Say Are you serious? Porn. Yeah. They're, they're flagging. A lot of articles about it. Oh yeah, my god. Articles. They say it's not appropriate, but if you're skinny, it's appropriate. Yeah, including in, including people. like. 12 year olds in bikinis that are that well, are like doing dance to, to two chains that's gross that's super gross man that whole app is gross it's weird it's crazy yeah. a weird dynamic between every generation
We can't, we already asked you if you want to move over to the other end of the couch. You declined, so you will stay at the end of the couch. Too late now, buddy. No. It's not. I don't want to think back about virginity. Listen, dude, I will have you as a guest on my podcast, and you can ask me whatever I want. For now, this is Emily's show. Yeah, this, you guys should do it one by your OnlyFans. Mr. Stencil's life. He's upset you're even here. Now you're destroying this man's show. No life. Oh my God. Um. So Emily, carte blanche. If you could, like, you you have quite a bit of success as as a stand up. Come on now. You do. I got. I think you do. As as a fan of yours, I think you have quite a bit of success. Where what um what is your best case scenario? Right? Like what what do you want to be doing? Do you are you more focused on stand up? Like she's sold. She's already brought up. Um, I have no desire to be a touring stand-up comedian. I, okay. It doesn't interest me at all. I like. I want to do. Talk, I want to have my own talk show. I want to only. I want to be the host of my own reality show, talk show, pretty much anything that has heightened drama and weird characters. I love it. So uh, uh, stand-up is something I love. I like to do for fun. It's something I don't. I'm not that passionate about it. It'd be cool to have like a special, maybe one eventually but i don't feel at the level i don't feel like anyone should have a special until you're 40. i don't believe anyone's life experience has allowed them to be interesting enough to talk about their life experience until they're at least 40. i think if you're maybe okay 35 and above i think if you're under even louis ck like his early specials weren't great like they got amazing after he was over the age of 40. i think if you're under the age of 30 and you have a netflix special that's just Netflix trying to uh, like pawn you off on a generation and like mark, they're trying to be market you in a way. I feel like people can't share their truth when they're that young. They don't know it yet. They don't have but enough life I think experience. Are, I think Netflix is trying to get new viewers and they want, they want younger people to be interested in stand up. So that's why there's a lot of young people that have specials. I don't know if you've seen Pete Davidson's latest special, but it's, it's God awful. And I love is it. Pete I love Pete. Horrible! It's horrible. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's like it's Spee's funnier. <laughs> you can't even hear him. What about what about like John Mulaney? He got he got started, like, I mean he was, was young. He younger? I think so. He really? was. Uh, don't quote me on this, but I think he was 25 or 26 when he started having specials. I didn't know that. Yeah. Why don't we just cut out all that rat? <laughs> None of this is usable. That's all right. Just cut out all the part where I talk about no one should have a special. Listen, I, if I if I cut out all of the parts that all right, unless you're prodigy, unless there's you're not prodigy. gonna be any episode left. All right, the, pe the people I think deserve specials. You know, I, I watched a really good special the other night. It was Judah Friedlander. I love Judah Friedlander. His special is completely underrated and exceptional. He's amazing. We need more people like Judah Freelander giving specials. I agree. <sighs> I mean, why don't you watch Pete Davidson's special? And I'll watch it. Judah. I'll I'll watch them both. I I I mean, I've got nothing better to do tonight. Like I'll Pete, I'll, I'll check I them like out. Pete's personality. I like his point of view. I like his face. I'd like to. See you like him, like him? I was going to have it with a sexual thing, but Stencil said it behind me. Um, I, I expected more from his special. I, I, it wasn't great for me. Well, you win some, you I lose for some. Fact right now, I couldn't give a special. I'm not delusional enough. I'm not like you. Oh, I'm... I don't just reach out to... I think I could, ho I think I could host something right now. But I don't think I don't have enough material to give a special. Definitely not. Well, uh, if someone wrote for me, I could. Well, let's do that. Yeah, if I had writers, like which I assume a lot of people that are 
younger do for these specials, I'd be ready. Yeah. I would say I have the stage. I would say I have the stage presence to give a special right now and the energy. But I do not have the material. I disagree. I think you have. I think you have lots of great material. You've given. You've said a lot of great material during this interview. Um, but there are there are lots of hungry writers out there. I can introduce you to April's a good writer. Also, I have um, every single writer I know it wants to be the center of attention of themselves. So they'll write me a joke and then I'll tell it. And it doesn't and fit you. As well, and then they they tell everyone that I, I wrote that. The person I'm referencing is the same person that posts thirst traps. So maybe don't cut her name out of this one. <laughs> no, you should definitely write for yourself. I need to find a writer that's um, that can help me, like uh, you know, just like edit my material and like tighten it up. That'd be good, and like with some tags. Preferably. Uh, oh, Am I that boring, yeah. Emily? Jesus. Just the value. Just the value episode if you edit it down i'll promote it of course i'm gonna I edit it you give me confidence i will yeah, i think you guys together were a good little match not like sexually in that maybe i haven't seen either of your accounts yet <laughs> me and the dude are you talking about me in april i know that you want me to talk about you in april <laughs> <laughs> uh we were we were not compatible uh, that's all there is to you say about that anything? You guys went on a date? Well, not officially. I mean, we've both been in quarantine since we've met, so that wouldn't have been possible. You but... had a Zoom date. I just assumed that maybe you had a crush on her, so you like, hey, girl, I want to do podcast. I mean, she I did, know. but she established that, yeah, we're friends, which is totally okay. No, she invited me to a um, to one of her Zoom comedy shows a few days before, <laughs> a few days before we recorded, and um, she's like, yeah, we we uh, we met on Facebook dating, but. He's my friend. Okay, fine. Whatever. Wow, I love that. I love the new invite. It's just to, hey, just click on this link and you can come to this show. It's so easy. I don't have to go anywhere. We got friend zones. I don't care. I don't, I don't. There's worse. I, I, I acquainted zone with someone recently. There's worse things to that happen. I used to subscribe to that because I was a dumb idiot for a long time. I used to subscribe to that, but that's, that's all There's bullshit. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't oh, exist. You had an acquaintance zone before. I thought I was the only one that was bitchy enough to acquaintance zone someone. No, it's. Uh, I I felt as though it happened to me a lot growing up, but honestly, it was just because I didn't. Zoned. Well, friend zoned. But I'm talking about acquaintance zoned. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever been in? Uh, I I do that to people. I mean, if. If I were subscribing to that, I would I would maybe say yes. But listen, it either it's either going to work or it's not. It, there's either a connection there or there isn't. And you know, you let me go. that's well, absolutely it's true. With friendship, this girl wanted to be my friend, and we were on Instagram Live. We were hanging out, and someone said, "Oh, you're Emily's friend," and I was like, "Oh no, sh she's just an acquaintance." And she was like, "Holy shit, I've never felt oh, so no. terrible." and so getting an acquaintance zone on your Instagram live but I was like we've only known each other for a few weeks I don't really think that I would consider you I don't trust you yet to consider you a friend do you have a lot of good friends have you have you ever had a uh, a problem making friends no I have no problem making friends I have all the problem keeping friends people like me at first and then they get to know me more they're like okay this is too much and, and I'm out <laughs> you hurt my feelings peace that's the thing about extroverts that introverts don't understand is that we have an easy time attracting people, but we have a hard time keeping people because it's hard to uh, maintain so many different friendships. And a lot of times, especially introverts are attracted to us and they put a lot of effort into the relationship and they don't receive as much back because they don't realize how many friendships we're trying to maintain at once. So we have like only a little bit of energy to expend on every person where they're giving us like so much attention and we just can't reciprocate that back. So then they, then their feelings get hurt and then the friendship splits up because they consider us to be bad friends. It's like, I don't want to be selfish, but I don't have enough time in the day to cater to every like 25 people's emotional needs from all over the country. Like 
that's why I have a group chat right now. So everyone can kind of feed off of each other. So I don't have to give all my personal attention. I even turned off my DM because I couldn't handle getting DM replies anymore. So people really want to talk to me. They can open a new message and DM me, but no one can reply to my story anymore. I was, I was dealing with way too many people's emotional problems. I couldn't handle it. I'm not a therapist. I need to have my own problems. It's exhausting. I like that. I like that clip. Maybe we'll clip that too. <laughs> you know, my best material is coming from this podcast right now. That was oh, that was very wise. No, I absolutely agree with you. It it takes um, it takes a a whole lot of energy to to keep up with multiple people at a time. And I have I have you know very very few good friends, maybe three or four. You know that I that I I'm really cynical amount. I would say I have five good friends, mm -hmm. and the rest are like friends, and then there's the acquaintances, then there's stands, right? AK Gaffrey and this guy from India. Uh huh. Well, so would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Um, introvert, because I I really have to wind down. It takes me a long time after doing a lot of social interaction to build myself back up. And I've talked a lot during this podcast, and you've been a great listener, and I feel like it's going to take me maybe a few days to recover from this conversation. No, I'll be all right. Once again, the awesome thing about Zoom, I didn't have to go anywhere. This was, this was private. This gives me a chance to be totally open. I could or could not be wearing pants. You'll never know. So I, I am. Let's end it on the reveal. It's like a baby reveal party, but instead it's, is the guy I'm podcasting with wearing pants? Uh, <laughs> that you're not wearing pants. You'll He's have not to, wearing pants. You'll have to subscribe to my OnlyFans to see. Ever, all the viewers are wondering, are you or They're are not. you not wearing I don't have any listeners. They don't care. Mine do. I've given you a lot of information during this episode. You definitely have. I appreciate that. Something about yourself, aka, are you wearing pants? If I'm... you're not, just show your ankles. <laughs> They're really sexy too. It's like are a uh, a fifties call, like a fifties call girl. There you go. He's wearing you like pants, that? but he, you like he's that? not wearing socks. <laughs> All right. Well. Now you know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. He's giving me one of these. All right. I have to drop off at the Airbnb. But well, you know what? I'm not on his time. I'm on my time. I thought this so was I'm my show. Send me the 40 bucks now. Send me the 40 and I'll give you a ride. Anyways, how did you want to conclude the podcast now that we all know that you're wearing pants? Oh, my God. Uh, this has been an absolutely ridiculous episode. Thank you so much for joining me, Emily. Um, where can people find you, should they choose to do so? On Instagram and on iTunes, Spotify. Emily knows everything across the board. E-M-I-L-I-E -I -E knows everything. Fantastic. I had, a, I had a great time. I'm really glad. I had a good time, too. This was awesome. We've well, been trying to schedule. Go, let's, maybe once you and Svi have your OnlyFans account, let's do a follow-up interview. You got it. Absolutely. I'll tell you. Uh, I'll tell you about all the naughty bits that I post up there. Um... <laughs> and if you guys want to donate vegetables to him, he won't experiment with that. Not because they're vegetables, but because he doesn't feel like paying for them. I hear that. We're all poor right now. Where can my listeners find you? I am everywhere at my name, Devlin Wilder, D-E-V-L-I-N-W-I-L-D-E-R. Uh, this show is everywhere at Faux Real Pod, F-A-U-X-R-E-A-L-P-O-D. And uh, you can listen to this show absolutely everywhere. You can find podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Luminary, and the Laughable Comedy app. Nice. Awesome. Cool. Great, loved it. <laughs> cool. I think you should keep the part in about how you like got people on your show in weird ways, and then I'm like, what am I doing here? I mean, that's a whole other episode. I 
I can tell you some Nobody of the shameless ways right that I've on. pulled on, that I've pulled guests into my show. I tweeted Janet Varney. Cool. So I had Janet Varney on the show, and she is, do you know her? Have you met her? She is the sweetest. Her. Oh, wow, she's beautiful. She is, she is amazing. Nice. She's on, she's on Nickelodeon. See, if she was on Nickelodeon, she's on, Nickelodeon? She's on your podcast, maybe I can. She's on Nickelodeon? What show is she on? Oh, uh, right. She's the voice of Cora. That's yes. right. Yeah, we talked about that. Anyways, well, I had a great time. Cool. Thanks for doing this, Emily. I'll give you his uh, Instagram handle if you want it. Sure. Shavichi time. All right, I'll look it up. I don't know if you care, if you have to include it in the notes. Listen, if he's going to subscribe to my OnlyFans, I'll take it. Yeah, you should definitely link up because you already got a you already got someone now. Okay. All right, thanks. Enjoy I'll your afternoon, Emily. Bye. Bye. Remember, you can follow me, as always, across all the places at Devlin Wilder. That's D-E-V-L-I-N-W-I-L-D-E-R. And Faux Real at Faux Real Pod. That's F-A-U-X-R-E-A-L-P-O-D. That's it for this one. See you on the next one.